Once the F-16s will be 60 years old in 2040, perhaps redesigning them might result in their replacement, because F-35 ultimately failed to do so. The United States Air Force declared the need for a new multi-purpose fighter jet to replace its aging F-16 fleet, while emphasizing that it would lack the F-35's high price and advanced technological capabilities. Defense observers were taken aback by the news, made by Air Force Chief of Staff General Charles Brown, as the F-35 was expected to be the F-16's replacement as a cutting-edge fifth-generation fighter. But strangely, F-35 did not turn out to be what it was supposed to be. But what are the shortcomings of the F-35? What's wrong with it? In today's episode, we will talk about why the F-35 will not replace the F-16. Let's begin. Air Force Chief Brown recently proposed creating a fighter jet of the, quote, fifth generation minus. The USAF started working on a program to create a replacement for the F-16 about 20 years ago. But as more cutting edge technology was added, the program's cost grew unreasonably high. Other countries were enlisted as partners to help offset these spiraling expenses when it became unaffordable. In a cruel irony, the F-35 has evolved into the problem that it was designed to tackle. The US Air Force now requires a new fighter plane to satisfy their needs. In addition to the $397.8 billion it costs to construct the F-35, operating it for 66 years is anticipated to cost $1.182 trillion. Each F-35 aircraft costs a little around $100 million, but the least of its worries is cost. What are defects? Despite having cutting-edge technology and capabilities, the most recent stealth aircraft has structural issues and several difficulties. The most recent of these is a structural engine defect and production shortage. The F-35's engine issue is partially a result of its inability to deliver engines for maintenance as quickly as necessary, as well as a problem with the thermal coating on its rotor blades, which significantly reduces engine longevity. According to Defense News, it is a, quote, major readiness problem, and by 2022, close to 5 to 6% of the F-35 aircraft may be essentially grounded while it waits for engine upgrades. The software of the aircraft is another difficulty. Between 1 and 2 million lines of code make up the majority of modern fighter jet software. The F-35 has a bug problem and has an average of 8 million lines of code in its software. The U.S. Department of Defense is seeking assistance from three U.S. colleges to find a solution. Additionally, the fighter plane has a bit of an embarrassing touchscreen issue. Pilots who switched from hard-flipped switches to touch displays indicate that in contrast to a physical switch you can be certain has been triggered, touchscreens in the aircraft don't function 20% of the time, according to one F-35 pilot. In the face of all these obstacles, Air Force Chief Brown used the analogy of a Ferrari to support his choice. You just use your Ferrari on Sundays. You don't take it to work every day. We want to be careful not to use all of our high-end fighters for the low-end battle, he remarked at a news conference on February 17th. In a word, Brown wants to reduce the F-35's operational frequency and subsequently create a less sophisticated successor. The F-16s in use today are outdated. Even the most recent versions of these were purchased in 2001. It will be a difficult task to replace the 1,000 F-16 fighter jets that the USAF currently utilizes as a workhorse. Ordering new F-16s is not an option either, even if simply because they are becoming obsolete. The significantly less expensive Suhoi 57 fifth generation fighter jet is already in service with Russia. Even though it lacks the F-35's technological prowess, there is substantial skepticism that the F-35 could defeat the Su-57 in a one-on-one -on -one dogfight. The F-35 is very good at fighting from a distance, so this makes sense. The twin-seat J-20 fighter jet, which promises to have significant offensive capabilities, is also in production in China. The F-35 was essentially created to be the pinnacle of technological advancement. However, going overboard results in design compromises. The F-35 is available in numerous, expensive versions to accommodate various requests. In addition to a conventional version suitable for land operations, 
a version created expressly for aircraft carrier takeoff, a smaller naval variation, and a vertical takeoff variant, Lockheed Martin also offers them. However, the F-35's numerous variations result in a significantly more complicated design. Problems may be solved in one variant, but not necessarily in others. Sadly, nothing can stop the following fifth-generation minus plane from running into the same problems that put the F-35 in its current bind. More hazardously, it might take decades to construct a new jet. By the standard of the F-35, two decades. The F-16s won't be much younger than 60 years old by then. Is the F-35 ready to engage in dogfights? Some questioned whether the F-35 could engage in dogfights. Does it have the ability for dogfights? In reality, the answers to these queries are fairly simple. It can dogfight, but given the range, accuracy, and fidelity of its sensors and onboard computer processing, it would not need to do so very frequently. What about the merits of the question itself, though? Can the F-35 dogfight effectively? Would an F-16 perform better than it? The solution, according to an Air Force pilot who was present at the time, is obvious. No. Although it is a well-known truth that the F-35 can dogfight, there is much more to be written about the additional reality that it may end up being extremely improbable that an F-35 will ever have to dogfight because of its sensor suite and processing technologies. The likelihood that an F-35 will kill the enemy covertly may be significantly higher. The F-35 fighter jet was a disaster, as the U.S. Air Force implied earlier this year a time and money-consuming failure. The F-35 was designed to be a lightweight, affordable fighting aircraft. The F-35 is one of the most well-known disasters in the annals of military procurement, though, with costs per jet hovering around $100 million and double-digit project delays. What happened, and what does the F-35 fighter jet's future hold? It's crucial to understand the reasoning behind the F-35 fighter jet project to comprehend how we ended up with such a pricey, high-profile disaster. The U.S. military was looking to replace hundreds of antiquated F-16s from the Cold War in the 1990s. The goal was to build a fleet of cutting-edge, futuristic stealth aircraft. Almost all of the Air Force, Marine Corps, and Navy's current tactical airplanes would be replaced by this fleet. According to Forbes contributor David Axe, quote, the Air Force alone sought approximately 1,800 F-35s to replace outdated F-16s and A-10s and comprise the low end of a low-high fighter mix, with 180 twin-engine F-22s making up the high end. The military had an idea for a combat plane that was small and affordable. Lockheed Martin was given the task of building the F-35 fleet in 1995, only 250 of the 1,500 intended jets have been acquired by the U.S. Air Force after more than 20 years, making the F-35 the most expensive weapon system ever created. How did a project that looked reasonable and simple at first get so off course? The F-35 is a costly failure for several reasons. First, according to experts, the idea was wrong from the start. To the detriment of combat needs, the F-35 design prioritizes the use of cutting-edge technologies. The F-35 is loaded with high-end, frequently unproven technology that needs a lot of maintenance, rather than being designed as a lightweight stealth fighter jet that performs effectively. According to Dan Grazier, an analyst with the Project on Government Oversight in Washington, D.C., quote, they tried to make the F-35 do too much. In addition, a 2014 60 Minutes investigation revealed significant weaknesses in the procurement procedure. Before the F-35 was tested, the Pentagon started purchasing them. According to Frank Kendall, the Pentagon's top weapons dealer, quote, We started buying jets a good year before we started test flights. I called that choice acquisition malpractice. What was initially intended to be a sturdy, dependable, and adaptable fighter plane has evolved into a high-end, sophisticated design loaded with pricey technology. The F-35 has evolved in such a way that it is now essentially useless for its original use. The F-35 is not prepared for close-range air-to-air combat, 
nor is it improved to operate well across long distances. Additionally, all of this technology demands pricey upkeep, and F-35 flight hour costs, on average, $36,000. Because of this, the F-35 is at least three times more expensive to fly for an hour. Charles Q. Brown Jr., the Air Force Chief of Staff, succinctly summed up the issue in a statement announcing the investigation of additional fighter jet options. You use your Ferrari on Sundays. You don't take it to work every day. Our high end is the F-35. Making sure we don't utilize it all for the low-level fight is important. What happens to the F-35 next? The F-35 fighter plane has been in development for 20 years, and there are currently no viable alternatives. If given an exclusive new contract for maintenance, Lockheed Martin thinks it could reduce operating expenses to $25,000 an hour by 2025. However, the Pentagon has voiced doubt that this effort will be able to achieve that goal. This seems implausible for several reasons, including the fact that there are over 800 ongoing problems and a persistent shortage of spare components required for routine maintenance. Many officials are interested in ending the F-35 program rather than continuing with its development to start a brand new project with a new design that would be less expensive and more dependable. The military is essentially considering developing a new fighter to address the issue with the other new fighter they designed to replace the outmoded old fighter. According to Forbes, the current plan to address the F-35's flaws is to develop a, quote, high-low mix of expensive fifth-generation F-22s and F-35s and affordable fifth-generation minus jets. Any new fighter jet effort, however, may not be able to escape the same pitfalls that the original F-35 program did. So let's call it a day on this discussion. What do you think about F-35's failure? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you loved today's video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more similar stuff. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. We'll see you at the next one.